and you will find that you've arrived in Frankenstein. Perhaps the Count will find a way to make his monster work today. For if he solves this monster mania, he can return to Transylvania. So welcome where the sun won't shine to the castle of Count Frightenstein. <laughs> you little devils. You will grow for the count while I will cut out all the sunshine. What does it matter? We have no sunshine anyway. I'm surprised you did not come in with the sandbox. What are you doing with that ridiculous surfboard and why are you late? Explain. I was outside surfing, master. Hmm. All right, put that down now. For now, it is the time for our national anthem and to raise the flag. All right, sing it, Igor, as you've never sung it in your life before. Never as I've sung it before, master. Do not question the count. Sing. Go, but he goes. He turns you away. Yo. I pledge by the sign of the three tall sloth that I will do my best to do my duty, to always obey the laws of the werewolf pack, and to never rest until Bruce he lives once more and takes his rightful place in the annals of these distinguished monsters. And I can once again return to that most glorious of homelands. No, God, he Wait. Mm-hmm. When you should have been saying Transylvania. I lost my place. All master. right, sing the tag. Glory, glory, Transylvania, as we go tumbling, tumbling through Transylvania. A new one, master. Everything uh, with the count is new <laughs> and established. So original. Now explain yourself. What were you doing? Well, master, I was outside surfing. <laughs> You are surfing. Yes, Master. You are such a young, young Igor. Do you not understand that we have no beaches? No, Master. You do not surf on sand. You surf on water. And water oh, we've, we've got. got. That's, that's cool. <laughs> Petvet said to me, I'm getting quite fed up with parakeets who whistle while they're drinking from a cup. I told him that I thought it was a rather clever feat, for whistling's an accomplishment, but while drinking, well, that's neat. It's clever, yes, the doctor said, but now I am afraid that when they whistle in this way, I'll end up getting sprayed. Yes, Dr. Pedret, I've got him here, not him here yet, Toots. Oh, I've been reading your letter, I've just started. Lovely animal, oh, beautiful. Thank you very much, Dr. Pedret, yes, goodbye. Uh, dear Igor, today I send you a dog that is called a Welch Corgi. Used for centuries to herd cattle, sheep, and swine. Swine is like pigs, you see. Also hunted small game. 
In Welsh, core means a dwarf, and gi means dog, sometimes called a healer because it nips the heels of cattle and then flattens itself on the ground to avoid being kicked. Two breeds, the short tail, this one is a short tail, you hardly got a tail, and the other one is called a long-tailed cardigan. The Pembroke, this one here, descended from a breed called Spitz in Flanders. And it came to Wales with the Celts more than 3,000 years ago. That's about as old as me. It's funny you don't look familiar. <laughs> Lovely dog. Oh, it's a nimble-footed, alert, bright, and has a fox-like face. Look at that face, just like a little fox. Oh, you're so nice. The Pembroke also has a fox-like head with short, pointy ears that stand up erect. I think what I would like to do is keep you with me, Toots. I'll just phone up the slot. Oh, hang on, another call. Hello? Oh, yes, Doctor. I was just going to phone the slot to ask if I can keep. Just, I'll put you on hold. Hang on. Deva, you on hold. Uh, I'll just dial the slot. Hang on. H Hello, Mr. Slot? <laughs> Only a small dog. Well, what are you getting, Soy? You can't stay with me. This slot is... <laughs> hang on, hang on. Uh, Dr. Petvet? <laughs> the slot said no. And I have to bring the dog back, the corgi dog. Yes. <laughs> Dr. Petvet is something else. What? I don't know. Are all the monkeys out in the zoo? You stay tuned and you'll see a few. Ooga booga. If you put kryptonite on a stick and freeze it, does that make a cryptosickle? <laughs> The count rang me up. <laughs> Hold on there. Hold on. Oh, I hit now and You get don't hit with. nobody yet. Uh, Wait. Oh. Sit tight, Mammer, and tell Igor you're glad to see him. Oh, you're glad to see him. Yeah, likewise, I'm sure. Uh, friendship <laughs> is a wonderful thing. Uh, now, Igor. Isn't it? Yes. It seems that you need help. I need help? Well, anyone who says a sentence like it, let's have a look at this, please, in the instant replay. <laughs> the Count brung me up. Well, uh, they need help. True. They really need help because it's a lie. Oh. And also because oh. you said that sentence incorrectly. Now the slammer bammer hammer. Not yet. No, oh, no, he does not. I think about that sentence, Igor. Then tell me what needs fixing up. Oh, the roof. The roof needs fixing. What about it? Well, it needs fixing because it's got a leak in it. Just a little hammer? Igor, uh, yes. forget oh. the roof, forget the hammer. What about the sentence? Well, what sentence is that? It's wrong, it needs fixing. Oh, not the roof, the sentence. Oh. Uh, 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 I'll try it. The, the oh. count... Uh, uh, Igor, uh, there's no uh, such word as brung. Use another uh, one. Brung, brung. Bring. The count bring me up. No, Igor, no. Oh, that's wrong. Wait, wait, I'll get it. Keep thinking now. The count brings, brings, uh, uh, brought me up, brought me up. That's right. Now let's have a look at the corrected version there. <laughs> that's right. The count brought me up. Very good. Oh. <laughs> you think it's very good? Actually, it's not true. I brought him up. <laughs> oh. I like Igor. <laughs> Griselda <laughs> makes a cocktail that she calls Griselda's Dagger. <laughs> it's very strong, and after one, you usually start to stagger. <laughs> There's something in that drink that creates a musty haze, and its effect does not wear off, at least for several days. I finally had to ask her what she mixed in this strange brew. She said, why? My darling, gasoline. Oh, and lighter fluid, too. <laughs> oh, hi there. <laughs> I'm Griselda. 
I've got rhythm. I've got beauty. I've got my pad. Who can ask for anything more? <laughs> Swing it. Let's go. Now we're back in the old kitchen. <laughs> Bing. <laughs> now today we've really got a special number for you. We call this one Merlin's Magic Morbid Mushy Maybe Monday Mississippi Mud Flapper. <laughs> oh, <laughs> now we're going to start it off with just a base a coating here of llama milk. There we are. There's llama milk. Very good. Now, further to this, we add just a touch, thank you, of uh, whipped cream. Now, the thing that really, really is so biting about this is uh, these prickly little pine cones. We put them in there. Oh, they really get your tongue going. <laughs> I'll tell you. Wow. Now, the last uh, ingredient here is green coffee beans. In this way, you see, you don't have to have coffee with your dinner or even after because it's mixed right into the meal. <laughs> Clever? <laughs> oh, the beauty. Now, away we go. Here we are. Oh, look at this cute little bird. Oh, what have you got in there? Oh, it's so sparkly. Oh, I love you. <laughs> now, as you know, with any Mississippi dish, we have to have a very basic ingredient, and that being a meatball. <laughs> so here we go with the meatball. Now we're going over to the cauldron, and we're going to put said meatball into said cauldron. My goodness, <laughs> had me fooled. Now, after having done that, we will now go back and mix up the batter. And it's looking awfully good. So now we go over to the cauldron and let's see what happens. Oh well, here we go. Cut it out. Into the cauldron. All right now, cauldron, cauldron, bun, bubble. Cauldron, bun, and cauldron, bubble. Here we are, taster time. Wow, that's a winner. But don't ever try it. <laughs> I can tell you. It is written that he who wets his feet in the limpid pools of Punjab shall surely host dampened spirits and soggy adidas on the feet of his leg. Whenever I have a grumpy animal, I just get the Maharishi to play something. You know, Sue's the raging beast and all the... Oh, forget it. The wolfman says, dig it, dig what? If ever you are by this way, drop in the zany zoo and stop to see Buana Clyde as you are passing through. He'll say, step in the trophy room, and there he'll tell you tales of how he captured and preserved dead lions, snakes, and whales. But don't say that I said this, because I know that he'll be hurt. <laughs> the biggest trophy of them all is Buana Clyde's stuffed shirt. Ooga booga, which means it's zany zoo time. Hello, hello, hello. Yes, it's Bawana Clyde Batty at your service and welcoming you to Zany Zoo. So nice of you to come along. Today, I would like to start our little show with an imitation of one of the bird calls. One of the more familiar here at Zany Zoo. The yellow-bellied sapsucker, and it goes something like this. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's all there is to... Oh, excuse me, please. Hello, Buana Clyde Batty, yeah? You're kidding. Oh, 
I beg your pardon. Oh, Rob, thank you very much. Oh, my apologies. The yellow bellied sapsucker doesn't go like that at all. Goes more like this. Bloop, bloop. Bloop, bloop. That's right. I would think that's right. Is that right? Is that you? All right. Now, I'd like to get to the film for. Excuse me, I'll pick that one's over here. Hello. Yes, but that was the that was the African yellow bellied sack sucker. Oh, you want the Tasmanian? Oh, Rob, right, have it your way. Oh well, that's what I'm here for to make everybody happy. All right, the Tasmanian yellow bellied sack sucker goes something like this. There you are. I think that should do it. That should keep everybody happy for the time being anyway. Let's get to our film now, because I think you're going to love what I'm going to show you today. So let's get over to the projector, and away we go. Right? Right you are. Here we are. Film all set up. That's right. Looking good. Looking just for it. Oh, right now. Oh, hold on there. Camera's on. And there we go. Oh, lovely, isn't it? Oh, look what we've got here, the chimpanzee. Now, this is the member of the great ape family, most intelligent and most human. Now, it lives in the tropical rainforests in Africa. Now, in the Niger Basin to our Angola. Now, look at this, there's no tail, arms are longer than its legs, just like the gorilla, isn't it? And normally run on all fours, that's right. But they can walk upright, you know. Now, their toes are turned outwards. They stand from three to five feet tall. Oh, I didn't know they got that tall. Now, they have long, long hair, and it's quite coarse. Now, the, the naked flesh-colored face, except for the black face there. You see it there? Right, right. Oh, look, here's a big cute. Isn't it lovely? Oh, yes. Now, it makes its home in trees and makes nests of branches and vines, you see? Now, each night he goes to sleep, but he has no permanent home at all. He's always wandering around. Now, they come down from the trees to get their food. Now, they run on three legs sometimes so that they have one to hold all the food. Isn't that nice? Yeah, that's right. They can run on all threes. They're very good, too. They're missing one cylinder sometimes, eh, mate? Ah! Hello there. Here, give us a kiss. Hey, nice kiss. Come on now, don't be shy, don't be shy. Now, you know, on other times, they can run on two legs while they use the other two hands there to hold more food. Boy, that can get a big load there. Now, they live in small potties and occasionally numbering up to 40. Oh, that's quite a bit, I would think. Now, males are arranged in a social order, you see. Now, inferior respecting the superior. That's right, that's how it goes. And I think that's just fantastic. Wasn't that, did you like that? I thought that was just excellent. I really did. And I hope you liked it. And now, this is Bawana Clyde Betty at your service. And don't forget the term we always say here at Zany Zoo, Ooga Booga, which means that Riff will never find the way unless the beady Clyde is there to grant it that. You understand? Good. If you do, write in and let me know. All right, cheer to bye. All right, mate. Off now. We're going to make some more films. Here we go. Be right with you. I'm the Grammar Slammer Bammer. Here we are again, old wall banger. Hello, Griselda. That's right. Hello to beauty in itself. <laughs> Hi, Harvey. How are you doing today? Hi there. Got a letter for you. Oh, please read it. Please okay, read it. dear Griselda, my father says it's good manners to call everyone sir. Is yeah. it really necessary? Well, not your mother. <laughs> Just kidding. Actually, it's a good habit to get into. Calling an older man sir is a sign of respect. And that's what manners are all about, so keep sir. That's a good thing to say. Harvey, you make me feel so young and beautiful. Dear Griselda. Coming at you. Dear Griselda, why can't I talk with my mouth full? Well, tricky, tricky. <laughs> Actually, it's very rude to talk with your mouth full, unless you've been gagged by a burglar or something. <laughs> now, if you've got something to say, swallow first. You could make a mess on the tablecloth, sweetheart. <laughs> oh, Harvey, turn up the oxygen, would you? Griselda's seeing double. Lay another letter on me. <laughs> Dear Griselda. What? <laughs> when they handed out beauty, I was there. Dear Griselda. I was there with the shopping bag. 
<laughs> I'm having so much fun. Dear Griselda, yes? when I take a girl out to the movies, do I have to pay for everything? The works, baby. <laughs> That's why I enjoy being a girl. Actually, you can go on a, on a date Dutch treat, which is what the Dutch people do. Woo! This means you pay for what you buy yourself. Ticket, you know, your own popcorn, champagne, whatever. But don't feel embarrassed about it either. Some of the best couples I know go Dutch treat. Right, Harvey? <laughs> Eat your I hearts out, so. Dick and Liz. Oh, I love you. Oh, my <laughs> Back in a moment, right after this important grog. Peace, brother. I'm drunk. I tell you, the librarian's the strangest man you'll see. He never opens up his door till 15 after 3. And then you'll have to hurry or he'll close it up again and keep it locked till Sunday when he opens up at 10. I asked him once just why he kept the place locked up all day. He said, I only read in peace when people stay away. jealous of the raven because he was considered a bird of good omen and always attracted the attention of men as indicating by his flight the good or evil course of future events seeing some travelers approaching she flew up into a tree and perching herself on one of the branches cawed as loudly as she could the travelers turned toward the sound and wondered what it meant. When one of them said to his companion, let us proceed on our journey. Come, my friend, for it is only the caw of a crow, and her cry, you know, is no omen. And our moral to that story is, those who assume a character which does not belong to them only make themselves ridiculous or simply be yourself and be proud of it ah. and now the bald knight a bald knight who wore a wig went out to hunt a sudden puff of wind blew off his hat and wig terribly embarrassing at which a loud laugh rang forth from his companions. He pulled up his horse and with great glee joined in the joke by saying, what marvel that hair, that hairs which are not mine should fly from me when they have forsaken even the man that owns them, <laughs> with whom too they were grown. <laughs> well, that's very good that he had a sense of humor. And now, I go very weary. And so until we meet again, go to your library. I am the librarian. And I say goodbye. Goodbye. What do you think happened? I wiped out on my bike. Oh, boy. <laughs> Hello. Ah, 
Hello. Is there the gentleman advertising in the Groton Mall? One slightly used monster for sale cheap. Yes, it is. I saw that, all right. <laughs> well, uh, tell me, uh, what's it doing in the engagement column? Well, you see there, it's ten cents cheaper a line. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. Tell me, uh, what are you asking for this uh, cheap uh, monster? Well, actually, I'm asking $12,000. Well, $12,000? That's not cheap. Well, I know, but that's just what I'm asking. Actually, what I expect to get is 18,000 gulars, which works out to about 12 bucks. <laughs> that's pretty reasonable. Tell me, uh, could uh, we get him on approval? Well, you might, but I'd, like, I'd rather send him by bus. Can you give us some directions? Uh, yes, uh, I'd like him to be sent to uh, the castle Freitenstein in Frankenstein. Frankenstein in Frankenstein. Wait a minute, that's my address, and that's me. Who is this calling? It's Igor. Igor? Well, what did... Who's that? Igor, Hello? it's me. Will you get off the line? Hang up, it's me. Hang on, master. I got a chance of getting a good monster cheap. Hang on, master. Oh, I get it. H Hello? They hung up on me. I could have got a good one cheap. You are really something out. Would you mind answering the phone? I wonder who it can be. There's one way to find out. That's not going to help, Master. <laughs> but I'll try. Hello? Yes? Who's that? That's cool. Okay. Phone again later. Yes, you never can tell. Something might twiggle the memory. Goodbye. Answer that one, will you? Master, I get tired of answering the phones. But if you insist, hello, yes, oh, Miss Hildegard, how did you get in here? Good. What happened? Oh, shame. Okay, I'll tell the count. Okay, bye. What happened? That was Miss Hildegard on the front. Was it really? Yes. Her brother's in a lot of trouble. Is that right? Yes. He was in the apple orchard, you see. Yes. And he was walking along trying to steal the apples. Right. And he stepped into a bucket of cement. Well, what happened? Well, she's very worried that he'll become a hardened criminal. <laughs> Not funny, Count. Not funny. Bruh. <laughs> Guess what? A commercial again. Boy, bad news around our place. The termites next door had a real dilemma. Their children have eaten them out of house and home. <laughs> Definitely funny. Lunch time. <laughs> The professor was invited to a weatherman's convention and asked to bring along all sorts and kinds of new inventions. He showed them his new camera to be used in hurricanes, and they thought it should be tested, so they all went up in planes. The camera worked and pleased them all, but our friend could only mutter, the eye of that great hurricane blinked when I snapped the shutter. Fear not what you hear, and enjoy that which you see. Greetings to you, ladies and gentlemen, and boys and girls, and mothers and fathers and people, and teachers especially. I am the professor, Julius Sumner Miller, and physics is my business, and enchantment therewith. We are doing some wonderful things with electric charges, and I am led to say, by way of introduction, that when I was a little boy, a certain professor at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology developed a machine which came to be known as the Van de Graaff electrostatic generator, of which we have one. And those he made were enormous, 30 feet in diameter, on huge supporting columns mounted on railroad cars so that their distance between could be changed, closer or farther. And the charge that they could develop was hundreds of millions of volts. And great things could be done. 
Since inside the chamber the field is free, a laboratory can be set up or an x-ray machine can be put between one and another and x-rays produced. So here we have a Van de Graaff generator and I better write that name so you always get it properly spelled Van de Graaff G-R-A-A-F <clears throat> and so we have one. Now its mechanism is too much for me to explain but the principle dates from Thales 500 B.C who observed that when amber was stroked, it acquired the property of attracting to itself light bits of straw and dust. So we have a motor which turns a belt which deposits on this sphere some electric charge. Proof. I am going to put on here a piece of fur, and I am going to start the generator, and certain strange electrostatic forces arise. Watch it. Oh, I just love that. Now, because the charge is abundant and the potential very high, I have to be very careful and circumspect. I want to do that again because it is fun. If we could have it, an absolutely symmetric piece of fur, it would hover at such a distance, supported by Coulomb forces. But watch it. The professor is certainly a clever fellow. Ah, that's good. Now I have another device which I have named the Mad Professor's Head. See, some pieces of paper, each of which will acquire the same charge and the mutual repulsion will drive them apart. Watch it. There we are. There we are. The Mad Professor's Head. And now I have to be very circumspect. Very circumspect. Oh, 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 there was a little stuff there. And I, I, I not all your hearts, a little set of Twitter. You're all enjoying that. And I can say what I think, but I won't. Now, <clears throat> here we have some plastic stuff, styrofoam in a lucite vessel. And I'm going to put it there. And the same thing will happen. The same thing. Mutually charged stuff will be repelled by mutually charged stuff and we'll have an electrostatic shower. There we are. Oh, don't I love that. Don't I love that. But I wouldn't get in there. Well, indeed. Indeed, when Peter von Muschenbroek, a Dutchman, invented the Leyden jar, he was accidentally shocked one time, and what did he say? I would not take such a shock for the kingdom of France. Beautiful thing. And so, here we are, in the 21st century, nearly, doing things that bear on the fundamental principles first brought forth by the ancient Greeks. And so our culture is one with theirs, intellectually, in government, since it was there that democracy was born. And I urge you to go read about Socrates and Plato and Aristotle, Anaxagoras, Anaximenes, Epicurus, Aristophanes, Euripides, and the great, the great ones of that culture. I'll be here again. Thank you for listening. Far out. <laughs> Can I have some milk? Igor, what's going on now? I offered him a cookie, I offered him a glass of milk, and he wouldn't even offer his hand. Listen, all you have to do is offer him some Dracola. That will do the trick. I'm sure. What's in the mail today? Oh, master, there's a couple of bills. Right. More bills. Okay. Threats from the neighbors. Right. Attention, Igor. Right. Just a pamphlet. Oh, yes, the real stuff at the back here, Master. Very good. I'm ah. going to take care of these by airmail. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> oh, yes, yes. Something of the pizza parlor, Master. Oh, for a pizza parlor. Well, what do they have to say? I'll read it to you. That's the easiest way to find out. I guess so. Go ahead, Igor. Dear Mr. Count. That's, that's me. you. Yes. <laughs> the pizza that you ordered last month can be picked up at the post office anytime in the next week between the hours of 12.30 and 12.35. Please bring identification. 
Well, I'll send you down to get that for me later. Anything else in the mail, Igor? Yes, 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 lots of things. A little parcel, Master. Ah, oh, good, good, good. What's in there? I don't know, I don't know. But let I suspect... Let me see, let me see. Thank you. You get all the fun. You can't even open the little parcel. No, you can open the parcel. Uh, I knew you couldn't do it. I'm not sure I did. I'll Come on, use some strength. Here, I'll open the parcel. I'll show you what you do when you get stuck on these things. There we go. Ooh. Oh, this is very nice. What is it? Oh, essence of swamp water. Yes, that's a sample of a new kind of aftershave. Remind me to get some, Master. I will. <laughs> and you should get some for me when you go into the village next time. <laughs> yes, Master. All right, Igor. Anything else in the mail? Nick. Oh, from Uncle Sylvester in Africa. Oh, what's he want? It's going to be interesting. It certainly is. I haven't heard from him in a long time. Dear nephew. That's you. Oh, that's me. Come. Hmm. I am stranded in Africa. Uh -oh. Can you send me a ticket? Listen, he's a relative, is he not? True. Then I will send him two tickets. That's very kind well, of you. I shouldn't die. I mean, I'm a generous kind of fellow. Well, you said Here. Me. Now, I will give him two tickets. Here's one for, oh, a ride on the octopus. And here's one for a ride on the Ferris wheel. Hey, I'll send those off to him. You certainly are very generous, man. Oh, well, you have to be in my racket. <laughs> my racket isn't tennis. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else, Harry? Igor? Yes, Master. Oh, to the Dracola Bottling Company. Oh, yes? Dear Mr. Dracola Bottling Company, whoever you may be. It's us. That's you, Mr. Not me. I'd rather not get involved. Ah, oh, never mind. I purchased a bottle of your Dracola yesterday. Good. And to my horror, uh -huh. I found a spider floating around inside. I demand an apology. This is a disgrace. I have never heard of such a thing. How could that possibly have happened? Igor, I want you to get onto the phone and to contact that man personally because I want him to return that spider here so that I can properly apologize to the spider for any inconvenience caused him. Dear Oracle, is it true what they say about Dixie? Is it? No, it uh... That's a no-no. Dear Oracle, is it true that certain people have certain astrological signs, and, and if they have the same astrological signs, do they have the same physical features? What I mean to say is, do all Capricorns look the same, and all Aries look the same, etc., etc.? Yours sincerely, Virgo. I will think on this. Ah, yes, but only for a moment. Well, of course, all people do not look the same, but people of, of the same sign do tend to display many similar physical characteristics. For instance, today's sign, Leo, tends to be a large person, while many Geminis tend to be tall and thin. I don't have time to reveal all these signs and, and all their features today, but look around yourself and, and see if you can figure some of them out just by observing the people that you, that, that you want to understand. Now, if you look very closely, you might be able to see and to tell just by the gestures that they use. And so, now, I knew it. I felt it coming. My aching eardrums. Ah, why did they have to do that to show me that my time is up? There must be a more pleasant way to do it. I don't ask much. Maybe, say, a, a dozen gypsy violinists playing an up-tempo version of stormy weather. Even an, an eight-foot Amazon who's proficient on the French horn. Or, or maybe a trolley car. That, a trolley car that can go sideways and jump up and down at it. Oh, look to the stars. That's all I can say for now. Goodbye. When I'm calling you... Stay tuned for the most frightening part of the show. We'll be back in a minute. You know, Igor, Bruce has a mechanical mind. <laughs> That's too bad. Some of the bolts are loose. I am the wolf man. Oh, <laughs> Expert 
expensive, rock solid, expensive, rock solid, expensive, nothing's gold. Too much. Hey, 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 hoo, 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 and how do you do? I am the Wolf Man, coming to you from E E C H. And remember and say after me, we believe in the Wolf, cause I am the Wolf Man. Okay. Hot tonight, what's happening? Yeah. Hey, count, sounds good. You're kidding me. All right, I'll, I'll spread the word. The good word. Okay, baby. There's a chance he may discontinue Dracola. Wouldn't that be groove? <laughs> Chad time. Later, pal. And the time will be... Nothing. Missed it completely. <laughs> Hello, Master. Hello, Igor. You know what I talk, Master? What? The slot eats a lot. The slot is not the only one who eats a lot around here. Look at you, Igor. You'll never stop eating. Why, the Count doesn't get a chance to even get to the food before you. Master, I don't eat so much. You certainly do. Igor, have you ever tried to keep track of just how much food you have eaten in your lifetime? Yes, Master. As a matter of fact, yesterday only I made a list of all the things I've eaten. Well, read it to me. It might be right. for good reading. <laughs> 23 acres of potatoes. Two mountains of salt. 15 miles of string sausage. 210 prime heifer cows. 12 warehouses of brown bread. And once by accident, master, I ate a silver quarter dated 1492. That was a good year for quarters, no doubt, eh? Yes. <laughs> I don't understand you, Igor. You've got to start this. You really do. I should show you my new invention. That would stop you. But now I think I will have a peanut. Oh, oh, get, get, master. I think you should let me try them first. You never know. It might have been a bad year for peanuts. They might be poisoned. You're absolutely right. We can't take any chances with the count. You may try them for me. Thank you, master. <laughs> I can't stand this any longer. Do you realize we've got to stop you from all of this? I have to show you my temptation resistor, my new invention. Master, I hope it's not like the dirt diet I was on. No, it's not like the dirt diet, but you must admit that at least we got the lawns mowed for free, huh? I admit I was there. That's right. No, I'm going to show you my new temptation resistor, and I will prove it to you. Get me a donut. It's over there. Yes, Master. Now, we will stop this once and for all. It's ridiculous. Aha, I know this will work. Ah, Igor! You also want one, Master? Igor, will you ever stop? Put that down on the table. I've got to show you how the temptation resistor works. Now. Master, I don't want to get involved. You listen to the count, Igor. Now, here's how it works. Yes, Master. Temptation resistor, right? There is the donut. Now, I'm hungry, hungry, hungry. I want that donut. So I approach the donut, but my temptation resistor to the re rescue. I think he fainted. <laughs> Maybe I'll eat a donut. Ah, the temptation resistor. Let's see if the Count's new invention works. You ready, Igor? <laughs> Nothing. I think I'll eat the rest of the donut. Out of sight. Mail, working on the mail. Oh, real cool, Daddy. Oh, I'm working on the mail. Someday my count will come. Ha 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 ha. Here he is here. now, the star of stage, screen, and color radio. The Count. Hello. Ta-da. And how are you feeling today, Harvey Chair Chewer? No, no, no. <laughs> it's Harvey Wallbanger. <laughs> Is there any mail from the Count? Right. I beg your pardon. I say, I wish you'd get that right. Oh, well, I'll do my very best. <laughs> and now, is there any mail for the Count, please? Yes, there is. Good. Two Thank letters. You very much. That one. <laughs> and <laughs> that one. Oh, you want missed on that one. Uh -huh. <laughs> I catch him every time. Right. right. Oh, I made a very big error. <laughs> <laughs> ah, never mind that. 
Now we are going to find out what we are going to find out. Dear Count, isn't that nice? How many recipes does Grazilda have in her book? Well, let's see now. Judy, that's the name of the person who wrote to me. Judy, we're going to send you a picture. How many recipes in Grazilda's book? Let's see. There's two, three plus four is eight, is nine, five, there's a, about five. <laughs> a little joke. Did you like that, uh, a little Harvey joke. Pipe Puller? No, oh, no, no. Uh, you did it again. It's Harvey Wallbanger. No, emphatically no. The castle lights are growing dim. There's no one left but me and him. When next we meet in Frankenstone, don't come alone. Absolutely terrible. Good. I don't know, but this show, terrible.